Lack of knowledge, in my opinion, is one of the biggest reasons why wholesalers only stick to wholesaling. 90% of our pipeline that we have under contract is Novation right now. Brother, if you would have told me 10 years ago that I was going to be able to take an off-market deal and put it on the market, I'm like, dude, where the hell have I been for 10 years? I would have been, I'd have been killing it. Welcome back to the All In Real Estate Podcast, where we help you turn properties into profits and we keep real estate real. Today, we're going to show you what the five most popular exit strategies are and how every single one of them is vital to your real estate investment operation. But before we get going, I want to introduce my co-host, Mr. Max El Cerrador Jimenez. Brother, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, Carlos. How about you? Excited to be here today. Excited to talk about this topic. I think it's crucial and important. Especially with everything that's going on in the market today, right? Mm -hmm. You know, I was just uh, having a conversation upstairs on, you know, like sometimes it's hard to teach an old dog new tricks, <laughs> yeah. right? For nine months, for nine months, people were telling me that Novations, that Novations had arrived, that Novations were not only here, mm -hmm. but they were going to play a big role in the, in our future business mm -hmm. of wholesale, Right. And, you know, I was like, oh, you know, even a couple years ago when Corey Geary was, again, screaming to the four winds, Novation Nation, right? Yeah. We're like, what is this guy talking about? Novation Nation? Nobody wants to do that, dude, right? Like, man, let's get to the cash. Let's get to the cash right now, right? And um, same thing, we mentioned Corey Boatwright and, and, and Eric Brewer and some of the guys, right, that, that were heavy on Novations now for a couple of years, mm -hmm. But a lot of wholesale operations, right, specifically focus on one of the five exit strategies, which is wholesale, 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 cash me out right now. Would you agree? Yeah, 100%. Uh, uh, you know, it's very surprising to actually see that there are shops out there. I mean, maybe some notable shops that are still, that are still only working off of one exit strategy. And look, they might be making money, but think about what they're actually leaving on the table by only leaning on that one exit strategy. And so if you're out there and you only have one exit strategy, uh, you're either leaving – right now, of course, you're leaving a lot of money on the table and or eventually you're going to be wiped out. Honestly, that's what I believe. Let me ask you this. Why do you think a lot of wholesale companies ar around the country, why do you think they're limited to just – wholesaling what are some of the reasons what are some of the key factors that that you can think of i'll, I'll give you one mm -hmm. right um lack of cash flow mm -hmm. lack of cash flow right most fly-by-night wholesale operations they need cash every single month in order to make it to the following month you get what i'm saying mm -hmm. it's almost like they're living paycheck to paycheck on a monthly basis mm -hmm. So I believe that that's one of the big reasons why real estate investment companies across the country are heavy on wholesaling. They need the cash. They need the cash right now. They need to pay bills. They need to invest back into marketing, right? They don't have their cash reserves in order, and they just they, they need the money. What, what, what are some of the reasons that you can think of? Yeah, I love that. Um, I wrote down three things. One of them includes what you just said right now, right? I, I believe the reason why a lot of, you know, people out there that are only leaning into one strategy, which is wholesale, is number one is who are they listening to? Think about that, right? Mm -hmm. uh, number two is what you said is, is money, right? They need the cash flow. They're mm -hmm. strapped. They're looking for that next cash influx, right? And then number three, uh, one of the biggest things with number three is you know, they're scared. They're scared to move out of what they know, right? They're, they're comfortable. Yeah. Right? And they're yeah. not comfortable going into the unknown. Exactly. Right? They're not comfortable being becoming uncomfortable again, right? Yeah. And, and the reason I say, number three, they're scared of the unknown or or really don't want to dive into that because, you know, uh, again, they're comfortable. I was like that, too, the same way you started the podcast saying – for such a long time, you know, we heard the rumblings, you know, I, I heard Novations first through Eric Brewer and then obviously our very good friend, uh, Corey. Uh, but I was like, nah, that's not for me. That's not for me. That's not for me. Mm -hmm. Wholesale, 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 wholesale. Mm -hmm. And eventually, look, 90 percent of our pipeline that we have under contract is Novation right now. I was very surprised to, to hear that because I remember when we were like at a 50-50 
right? And that pipeline, like, overnight, you know, 50-50, and then it was like a 70-30, and then we're like, okay, 80-20, and then boom, you know, as of last week, mm -hmm. we were at a 90-10, which, again, you know, there's, there's no right or wrong for that because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, a pipeline is a pipeline, right? And, you know, uh, a pipeline, in my opinion, you know, once, when, this, uh, when this novation pipeline begins to hit, it's going to hit pretty heavy. I mean, you're talking about imagine if you had, let's just say that, you know, five or even 10 deals we're going to close in a month. If you're on the wholesale side and your average, you know, wholesale fee or assignment, uh, assignment amount is about, you know, $17,000, right? And then, you know, you just, you close 10 of them that, 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 day, that, that month, right? Boom, $170,000 just closed. But as we both know, yeah. with Novations, it's usually twice or triple the amount of what a regular wholesale fee would be, correct? So let's just say that the average, um, the average um, Novation um, a dollar amount that you're going to be uh, rewarded or be receiving is, let's just say, $30,000 average, right? Mm -hmm. Now you close 10 of those, where are you at? You're at three hundred thousand dollars for yep. the month versus the one hundred seventy thousand dollars that you would have received if it was just all cash offers, all wholesale deals. Yeah. You, do you see the power in that? Yeah, absolutely. I was actually going to say that we're starting to see a trend now that we're our team members because you have to be really, really good at positioning the benefit of why a seller would go with you to you know an, an innovation deal. Yeah. So the better you get, the spread starts to get a lot, a lot bigger. Um, right now we're seeing anywhere between thirty to fifty, thirty to forty to fifty, almost sixty thousand dollars on the spread. That doesn't include right minus the fees and all that. But that's really the spreads that we're starting, we're starting to see uh, is. And we love it, right? Because think about it. You just said you you cash out on you know ten of those a month at thirty thirty thousand dollar average. That's three hundred thousand dollars. Absolutely. Yeah. Now you're, that, you're not getting that in wholesale at all right now. That's a very healthy healthy pipeline. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um. And you know, at the end of the day, I believe that you have to be more operationally sound mm -hmm. to be able. Yeah. to do novations, right? Let's talk about strategy number one, which is wholesale. Going back to that, going back to wholesale, you and I both know that wholesaling is vastly a majority, um, a, a marketing and sales operation, right? It's a marketing and sales business. That's what wholesaling is. You, you, you either go through the free marketing channels that we've mentioned on episode um, number one or number two, or you go through the paid marketing channel or you do a mixture of both. But at the end of the day, right, no marketing, no leads, no leads, no conversations, no conversations, no deals, right? Yeah. So wholesaling is a marketing and sales business. Now, you don't have to be too operationally sound to be able to, to wholesale in in this country, would you agree? Yeah, one hundred percent. Because again, it's not it's not real estate related. The only real estate part for, uh, of wholesaling is when you're comping, right? Yeah. Running comparables. That's mm -hmm. about it. Everything else is and and not to interrupt you, but based off a lot of the deals that we see from wholesalers, wholesalers across the country really need to improve yeah. their underwriting <laughs> capabilities. Absolutely. Would you agree? 100%. It's, it's I mean, ridiculous. It's uh, ARV 200, uh, wholesale deal 185. Give me, yeah, it's like, <laughs> dude, what? By the time I close this thing, I'm in the negative, bro. Yeah. yeah, so going back to your point about wholesaling, this is a mistake that a lot of people make is they think they're in real estate. They think they're in real estate investing and they're not. That's that's farther from the truth. You're in a marketing and sales business. You are marketing for an opportunity, and then sales come in as you're converting that opportunity to for a profit, right? Mm -hmm. um, now, I, I this is what I do. This is what I always how I coach our teams and other people that I've talked to in the past. I always say, look, you're a problem solver first, right? Find the problem. And then you're a closer second. You're going to use your closing skills to find a solution for that problem. Mm -hmm. And then the third thing is that you get to be the buyer technically, right, quote, unquote, of that real estate piece. Mm -hmm. That's really the way that breaks down, right? Yeah. Those three those three factors. And going back to your point is a lot of people make the mistake where they focus too much on the real estate itself. Mm. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, you know, most, uh, most wholesale companies, they, they lack um, the – the, the human aspect yep. of or the the human the social aspect right of getting in there and breaking down barriers and building up trust and building up rapport 
right? They, that's a huge, uh, that's a huge flaw in, in in the business. Most people they get right to it. There's no foreplay, right? It's very simple. It's like, you know, conversation begins. Hey, how's it looking for? Uh, hey, how's it going? I, I heard you're looking for a cash offer, right? Oh, so let me ask you some questions about the house. They get right to it. They get right to it, and then now they sound like everyone else on the phone, right? How are you going to be different from everybody else? Well, uh, you can start out by actually caring mm -hmm. about the person and caring about the person's needs, yeah, right? Absolutely. So uh, with that being said, uh, like you said, you know, most wholesale companies, they get straight to it. They don't know how to, how to actually – you know, get in there deep with the seller and and figure out uh, w whatever problem needs to be solved, and and that's why you know the 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 best acquisition uh, folks have you know they're they're much more profitable than the people that are just fly by night wholesalers that follow uh, a, a script and sound very robotic. Yeah, you know, at the end of the day, if you treat just let's say that you're gonna have whole, the only extra strategy you're gonna focus on is wholesaling, right? Um, if you're not going to treat it as a marketing and sales business where you know you got to put in a dollar to get a dollar back mm -hmm. and you really focus on the real estate piece is you're going to have to generate a ton of leads. Let's be honest, right? If you're go to a uh, phone call with the seller, if you're only focusing on the one extra strategy, which is wholesaling right away. Tell me about the property. Tell me about the big ticket items um, and then try to generate an offer. You're going to have to probably make the double amount of offers than like, I would come and be on the phone and work that lead, right? Start with building rapport, trust, and then when I make the offer, I know it's going to get accepted, right? Yeah. You're, you're really leaning heavy into the numbers game, so you got to think about that when you're only uh, deciding to go with the wholesale strat exit strategy. And by the way, here's another reason why a lot of people uh, stick to just wholesaling. Lack of knowledge. Yeah. Lack of, you know, especially on the fix and flip side, right? Most wholesalers are frightened, are hmm. frightened of the thought Mm -hmm. of having to rehab a property. Most wholesalers are frightened of the fact of having to hire, you know, a contractor, yeah. right? Uh, most most wholesalers are frightened of the fact of putting some skin in the game, you know, taking out a hard money loan or, or, or getting some private money from someone um, and putting down 10 or 20% on a deal. Um, most wholesalers are frightened buy that and again you know you do got to be careful if you are a wholesaler and you don't know what you're doing you don't have the you don't have uh the necessary uh real estate knowledge you got to be very careful because if you shoot and miss on a fix and flip right this isn't just you're not just out on marketing dollars at this point now you're out on some serious money right and this is why it's also very important to know how to underwrite because yeah. you can be off you can be off on your construction cost <laughs> but you can't be off on your ARV and in the, the example that I always give is let's just say that you assume you underwrite this property and you assume that the after repair value of this property is half a million dollars but you're off by 10%. Mm -hmm. You're off by $50,000. That can take a significant chunk from what you thought was going to be profit, right? Or in some cases, it could be the entire profit or it can even put you in the negative. Now, let's just say that you assume that the construction cost for this property was going to be $75,000 and you're off 10% off what you assumed the constru construction cost was going to be. You're only off $7,500. Yeah. You can still get through. Make that up. Right? You can still get through that, right? Be, that, that, uh, that mistake. And that's why it's so important to learn how to underwrite and how to get as close as possible the after repair value, the real after repair value of a property if you're going to fix and flip it. Now, don't get me wrong. You should know how to do that if you're going to wholesale. Right. For the for the sake of everyone involved in the transaction. Right. Especially if you're going to be out blasting deals and you're like, hey, well, I got a property that the ARV is 300 K, but the ARV is really 280 and you're trying to get 290 for it. Right. You're going to look you, you, you're going to look pretty, I would say, uneducated. Yeah. Right. Um, and, um, and, and kind of, uh, green, you know, green behind the ear or is it wet, wet behind the ears, behind right? The ears, yeah. So, um, again, <clears throat> lack of knowledge, in my opinion, is one of the biggest reasons why wholesalers only stick to wholesaling. Yeah. You know, uh, 
talking about that, about let's just stick with running the numbers correctly, right? One of the things that I've seen where people make a mistake in is they, when they're looking at the area, right? They're, they're running comparables, whether it's for a flip or let's say a wholesale deal or even a innovation deal in this case. They're looking at the area and what they tend to do is they go with this anomaly property that's that's a hundred, you know, fifty k, sixty k above everything else that's general in the area, right? And then and then what happens that you never know what type of transaction that was. I've learned this a long time ago. That could have been a seller finance transaction or or some type mm-hmm. of subject to transaction mm-hmm. that got recorded that most people aren't going to be aware of because they usually look at Zillow and Redfin and yeah. Redfin doesn't and Zillow doesn't tell you that this was a uh, uh, programs like PropStream do now, they'll say seller carry back or they'll say seller, you know, subject to. But while you're comping inside Zillow or Redfin, it doesn't tell you that. So you have to be careful. That's why it's very important to at least, you know, most time most people say grab three comps. I say go go to five or six and then try to be somewhere in the middle, right? Not the too low because that could be an as is sell, right? Trash, yep, whatever yep, the case may be. Yep. You want to be what is what are the what are you seeing that's consistent, right, throughout the comparables. And then go and then go a little bit more conservative if you have to. That's right. Um, and once again, for everybody that's out there watching or listening, I will give out how, you know, I'll give out our, our top marketing channels, how we generate our leads right now. Right. Number one is cold calling. Number two is Google AdWord campaigns. And number three is Facebook. Those are our top three marketing channels at this moment. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the, the Facebook campaign, it, it's, a, I like the cost per lead with our Facebook campaign. Right, right now it's about forty-two dollars. What I don't like is the lead to contract conversion yeah. on the Facebook campaign. Yeah, I'm usually a, it's a little higher. That's always been the the trend yes, on it. Always, yes. However, is when someone does fill up fill out a form, you know, especially on Facebook, because I don't know about you, I've never filled out a form on Facebook, right, yeah. or anything. It's a little sketchy. It's a little sketchy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I will say that you know my top two favorite channels, me personally, is cold calling and and pay per click. Mm. Very very simple, very simple to track, right? Very simple to operate. You know, you can hire an agency for you can hire agencies to run each each you know each marketing uh, campaign, um, and those agencies agencies usually provide you with the key performance indicator so that you can track on a weekly basis on how things are moving along. Right. Yeah. So for me, those are my top two favorite channels is cold calling yeah. and Google AdWord campaigns, a.k.a. pay per click. Now, there is uh, obviously something that's become very popular over the past two years is the PPL method. Right. Yeah. The pay per lead method. Um, I still can't tell you that I, I'm a big fan. I, 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 yeah, I'm still not a big fan. And I'll, t- I'll tell you various reasons. Um, I think that most PPL companies. Right. You're overpaying for leads. Um, it, but it's so difficult to find the right agency to run your campaigns because most agencies, they don't care about you. They take your money, mm-hmm. they charge you the management fee, and they do not keep a eye, an eye on your campaign and the performance of your campaign. So that's why a lot of people are converting over to PPL because yeah. they're like, well... You know, I don't care. You know, at this point, I don't have to sit here and wonder if someone's watching. If, if my guy is is my manager is taking care of my campaign, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna buy the lead for X amount of cost, and that's just what it is, right? Mm-hmm. So there's so many like pros and cons to yeah. it, right? But I will say this: another thing that's become very popular in the wholesale space is running your own campaign, mm-hmm. right? And I know that that does work for some people. I'm not. I'm not a fan of it. And I'm never going to be a fan of it because I want to put a majority of my time, right? If if I'm running if I'm running a paper uh, if I'm running my own wholesale company, I want to put a majority of my time focusing on the money making activities, which is what deal acquisition. Yeah, I want to be talking to people, right? And I want to be closing deals and I want to be bringing in revenue. Yeah, I think uh, that's a really good point because you know I wrote this down uh, where as you were talking about uh, you know PPL versus PPC running your own campaign. I think the average cost, pretty standard across the the country, and correct me if I'm wrong on this, Carlos, is about for 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 campaign management is about fifteen hundred dollars a month. That doesn't include yeah, that it, doesn't include your uh, your uh, marketing dollars. That's just managing. That's right. right. So in many cases, it's either a flat fee like fifteen hundred bucks, yeah. 
or it could be 20%. Some people out there even charge 30 or 50%, wow. which is a little ridiculous if yeah. you ask me. Yeah. So when I divide that, right, let's say I'm somebody that maybe doesn't want to run their own campaign, want to focus on only acquisitions, which I'm good at. Uh, you know, I divide that, you know, times, and it's not a lot of leads, by the way, it's 10 leads per month. That's usually, that's going to cost, those leads are going to cost you about $150 per lead. That's about that's two right. a week. So, you know, again, that's at $1,500 average, right? Uh, so, again, you got to kind of figure out where you're at, what level you're at. Yeah. Uh, do you want to have somebody manage? Do you want it? Because just because, some, here's the thing, I love what you said, just because someone manages it doesn't mean they're doing it good. That's either. right. Yeah. And that's why, you know, especially for people that don't have tens of thousands of dollars to spend on marketing, mm -hmm. I would never recommend pay-per-click or PPL as their first option yeah. for market for, as a marketing channel. I'm always going to go with cold calling. Why? Well, it, it is a lower cost per lead, right? And you're going to have, uh, I would say, a bigger opportunity in building a pipeline down the road because you're getting more leads. Imagine, right? If I spend fifteen hundred dollars on cold calling, I'm probably going to get. Let's see. Even if my cost per if my cost per lead is thirty dollars, I'm gonna get fifty leads, mm -hmm. right? You said you're getting ten in a month. I'm gonna get fifty leads mm -hmm. in 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 a uh, in a month's time versus your ten. Well, guess what, right? I have a better opportunity in you converting more in converting a, a deal, even if it's not immediately because my leads are not gonna be nowhere near the temperature that your leads are gonna be, right? But I at least get to build a pipeline because guess what? Three months down the road, I now have 150 leads in my CRM versus your 30. Yeah. So <laughs> again, people just really have to understand that it's not always about, oh man, you know, what are the hottest leads? Yes, it is, it, 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 you should be doing pay-per-click if you have the money to spend, right? But if you don't have, if your budget is somewhere in the one, two, three thousand dollars, you might want to do heavy. You might want to go heavy on cold calling. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with that one hundred percent. Especially, uh, you know, if your if your acquisition skills aren't to par, you don't want to be spending money on PPC. You'll be out the game pretty yeah. quick, right? <laughs> I've seen that happen. I've seen that happen. Imagine this, right? Imagine if you're in California. Or your cost per your your cost per acquisition there on pay per click usually might run you around fifty five hundred dollars to get a deal. Mm -hmm. Now don't get me wrong, right? When you sell when you wholesale that that California deal, it's gonna give you a good amount of money back. Mm -hmm. But I mean, a lot of people. Let's be honest, right? They either don't have the fifty five hundred or they don't want to spend the fifty five hundred. That's true. So unless you're gonna spend a bare minimum of fifty five hundred dollars, and there's no guarantees, right? Do not do pay per click. Start with cold calling. 100%. I agree so, with that. wholesale, we just identified a great exit strategy. Um, it's the best exit strategy to continue to bring that cash flow in, right? It's quick, it's easy, it's marketing, it's sales. Number two, which has become the most pop, one of the most popular exit strategies in the country as, 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 of, as of now, right? It's, it's, it's been. It's been lurking, obviously, right? Everybody's been kind of yeah. talking about it, and people have jumped on it, but very, very few wholesale companies in the country have learned at least efficiently and effectively how to do novations, right? Let me ask you this. What percentage of real estate wholesale companies across the country do you think have dialed in their novation process? Bro, if it's... That's a great question. I... What's interesting is I've been watching, I've been kind of looking and stuff, and I've seen some like big wholesale shops that are not even doing novation. So if we were to say more than five percent, I would be I would be like curious to hear. I agree that. with yeah. you. Yeah, I don't I think it's more you. than five percent, brother. So let me ask yeah. you this: uh, two things I want to ask you right now. Let, now let me ahead. put this. Let me put a caveat to that. So doing it correctly. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Right. That's yeah. right. So let me let me ask you two questions. Number one. What is a novation, right? Mm -hmm. uh, just in case anybody out there watching or listening is like, well, what are they talking about? That's mm -hmm. number one. And number two, uh, why do you think, why do you think these people are are haven't evolved? They have not transitioned into adding this as part of their arsenal. Yeah, I think um, so. What is a novation, right? A novation is I would I would say to explain it in kindergarten language. 
Give it it is me. a strategy that is between a wholesale deal and almost a hotel deal. Boom, perfect. Right? Yep. Kindergarten language here. Yep. You know, you're not technically buying it at a wholesale price because it doesn't work. You know, the, the sellers want a little bit more. Mm-hmm. But you're also not buying it, and and to you're not taking it down, so you're not risking any capital, right? And, and normally in a hotel deal, you're risking capital. But you're not fixing it up to the after repair you're value. Buying it, you're closing it. You're yep. listing it. You're selling it. Maybe clean it up. Maybe you know the do the landscaping. That's about it. Where in an innovation, the benefits are is that you get to offer more than a wholesale deal. And it's less risky than a hotel deal. That's, That's right. all innovation is, right? There's paperwork that allows you to get the permission from the seller uh, to uh, give you permission to, to list it on the MLS, the mm-hmm. multiple listing service across the country in any state. Well, not in any state, but there's the majority of states, mm-hmm. I would say, now. Mm-hmm. Um, and so what that does, here's the benefit. You're not just uh, you're not just going after cash buyers. You are now going after your conventional. Uh, traditional, conventional yep. buyers that qualify for a VA loan, an FHA loan, and a conventional loan as well. Beautiful. Yeah. Um, I actually think that Novation um, is one of the biggest blessings uh, that the real estate uh, industry has ever seen, right? If, again, if if it's done right, yeah. right? Because it, it, you don't want people to get hurt. No. And, 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 and you're like, Yes. No. <laughs> you don't want people to get hurt. You you wanna you wanna know what you're doing. You wanna know what you're doing. Uh, it's, it's funny. Guess what? Uh, I asked Ryan to send an agreement today, right, to the same lady. Actually, you sent it, mm-hmm. nice. right? I'm doing an ovation for somebody I know, right? I'm doing an ovation for somebody I know because I feel like there's an opportunity to take some swings, right? And 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 that's what you get. I mm-hmm. I the cash offer just wouldn't work for her. Mm-hmm. It wouldn't. It would not work for her. My cash offer was uh, forty five thousand dollars below what the novation offer is, right? This is what I like about the novation. The uh, you get you get to take you you get to take multiple swings, right? I'm gonna hit you with the uh, I'm gonna hit you with the cash offer anchor. I'm gonna hit you with an MAO of whatever the cash offer is gonna be, and then if none of that's working, I'm gonna hit you with the novation proposal. So I actually get kind of three swings if you take a look at it, right? If you take a look at it closely, I I, I get three swings, and at the you know most importantly, I get to provide the homeowner, the seller, with as much money as I can, a higher offer than a cash offer would be able to bring to the table. So that's what I really love about the novation. And imagine this, right? Right? We've been in this game a very long time. Brother, if you would have told me 10 years ago that I was going to be able to take an off-market deal and put it on the market, <laughs> I'm like, dude, where the hell have I been for 10 years? I would have been, I'd have been killing it from years and years and years ago. You know what I mean? Like it, it's, it's a, it's. I see it honestly, brother, and I don't know if I mentioned this to you, but I actually see this as a win-win. I see it as a win-win for for the for the for the real estate investment company and the client. I see it as a true. Real win win. Yeah, I I I agree one hundred percent. I think this is the best thing that could happen, uh, you know, to the real estate market um, on on a lot of notes. But I wrote down three things while you were describing, you know, the like why we love innovation so so much. Right? Is number one, you give sellers more money. Think about that. Right? You're gonna get, you're gonna be able to give sellers more money. That's always a big deal because the number one objection when you're talking to sellers is what price. It's too low. Okay? Yeah, Cash offers too low. Number two, which is my favorite, transparency. Mm. They know exactly what you're. If you do it right, they know exactly what you're yep. doing because you you have to be transparent. You can't list the property on the MLS if you're not transparent. You can't show the property if you're not transparent. Uh, there's so many things that I can talk about on the transparency side. And number three, you make more money. Think about that. You give the seller more money. There's full transparency on what's happening. And you get to make more money, bro. I love it, and I can see why we're we're operating at ninety percent. And it's only a matter of time until this pipeline just starts to pop, 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 pop. Right? I, I feel it. Yeah, I, I really feel it. And um, I'm 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 so happy. I feel like you know, with the cash offer, don't get me wrong, it was providing a service, but now it's like, dude, I can make a good amount of money, and I can give the seller what more than likely they're looking for in many cases, right? Um, it's just a win-win. And and if you don't adapt and if you don't learn 
this strategy and you don't learn how to execute this strategy efficiently and effectively, you're going to get left behind because I'll tell you what, until we actually said, okay, we're doing this and we got away from our old habits and our old ways, I, I, I we were getting beat out for like nine months. We were like, dude, what is going on? Like we're getting beat. We're getting beat 20,000, 30,000, 40. We're just getting beat over and over and over on, on what we thought, you know, were, were cash offer deals in the bag. You know what I mean? Some other, you know, uh, I would say real estate wholesale company a real estate investment company that knew how to innovate would come behind us and offer 20, 30. Well, hey, I'm sorry, but it, you know, sometimes and 90% of the time, I don't care how much rapport and trust you build with the with the homeowner, someone offers 30 more thousand dollars, <laughs> man. They might even just give you ten thousand dollars because they like you, but they ended up with you yeah. know 20 more thousand dollars, even though they 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 like you enough to give you some money. That's just a joke that doesn't happen. But what I'm saying is that's the case. That's what's going to happen. You're going to get constantly beat out by a person that knows how to do innovation. You know, it's it's amazing that you're saying that. Um, I wanted to say this, and, and I'm kind of thinking back as you as you started this podcast, like what a difference it would have made when you know back when you know the real estate was like real estate market was at with the low interest rate. How much more money you would have made oh, if you would have done bro. innovations, right? Yeah. And I'm thinking about it right now. Like it's already passed. We can't go back. But it's coming again. I I believe that once these int- even if the interest rate was to drop a one percent, they're supposed to drop in September. Yeah, we'll talk about that. We should talk about that here soon. But even if the interest rate drops one percent, the traditional buyer right that right now has been on the fence is going to flood the market. And guess what? Those of you that are doing innovations, those are of us that are prepared, that That's have a right. system, that That's have right. that have a very uh, pr- uh, good process, uh, you know, on how we're doing this. We're going to flourish, bro, 100%. You know, I believe that we are in a good situation with the way, with, you know, with what's going on with the novations and yeah. stuff. And I feel like we, you know, it's kind of like, you know what, here, you just reminded me, we'll close out with this because this is great. Next week, we'll talk about fix and flipping, right? And we'll talk about hoteling and we'll talk about rentals, which is buy and hold, mm-hmm. okay? So you got to tune in, for, tune in for next week. But let me just close it up by saying this. You just reminded me that I believe that there might be a season right around the corner. It's almost like tax season in the car industry, (laughs) right? What do people do in like the fourth quarter of, of the, of that previous tax year, right? What do the dealerships do? They load up on what? Mm -hmm. They load up on cars because they know that when tax season comes around, People are just gonna just boom, boom, boom. They're gonna start buying it, right? It gets it gets really hot, mm-hmm. right? The demand goes up. Well, we might be around the corner uh, for that type of season here shortly in the real estate game with these tax these tax rates uh, continuing to come down, and um, and demand's gonna increase heavy. And if you are sitting in a good position mm-hmm. with novations in your pipeline, you're going to be in a very good situation. Is that correct? Yeah, 100%. Well, brother, next week we will discuss uh, fixing and flipping, hoteling and buy and hold, right? I just want to let everybody know that if you have not subscribed to the channel, please do so. And if you uh, do enjoy the information and the knowledge that Max and I are bringing you uh, on a weekly basis, do me a huge favor, right? Hit the like button, hit the share button, and uh, don't forget to comment. We love interacting with you. Until next week, we will talk to you soon.